What's up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny. In today's video, we're taking a look at the best settings for Destiny 2. This is going to cover all platforms, that includes Xbox, PlayStation and even PC. So if you want to find out how you can get more frames at the best resolutions, then be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below. And remember to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But without further delay guys, let's jump into the video. Now this video has been put together in partnership with BenQ and they were kind enough to send me out one of their new Mobius 4K monitors. Now I'm sure you'll agree this looks absolutely incredible. Now in the massive box not only do you get an awesome stand which is easy to put together with no tools, you also get a unique remote and the monitor itself comes with a USB hub and this provides one USB-B and also four USB-A slots. You can adjust the height on this monitor by 100 millimeters and you can also tilt it and swivel it by up to 15 degrees. But if you like me and you prefer to have your monitors mounted then don't worry this has full VESA support which allows you to connect it to pretty much any monitor stand or mount that you may already have in your setup. Now in terms of connectivity it comes with two HDMI 2.1 slots and also one 1.4 display port meaning you can connect up both your PS5 and Xbox Series X while also keeping your gaming PC running. Now the model that you see here is the EX3210U which is their 4K 32 inch true HDMI 2.1 one gaming monitor. Now a monitor like this provides the ultimate output on any platform. The HDMI 2.1 supports 4K at 120Hz, making the most of your PS5, your Xbox Series X and also stretching to 144Hz for you high-end gaming PCs. Now with the launch of the latest generations of games consoles, HDR is becoming increasingly more popular. Now not every display can offer satisfactory HDR performance, but this Mobius monitor uses BenQ's proprietary HDR technology to enhance all the HDR outputs by fine-tuning all those settings so you get the best results regardless of the content. So whether you're gaming, watching movies, there is a corresponding HDR eye mode that will offer you elevated HDR effects for you to enjoy. Now this immersion is further elevated with the one millisecond response time alongside the addition of AMD FreeSync and the Premium Pro version of it, meaning that your latest games consoles will have the lowest latency available whilst offering the highest resolution with maximum colour density. It allows a monitor like this to deliver extremely detailed landscapes with clear vivid graphics that are both smooth and completely tear free. You also get 98% DCI P3 and 99% Adobe RGB wide color gamut which is absolutely ideal if you're looking for the closest color representation possible which is perfect for gaming and ideal if you create content. Now naturally Xbox Series X's and PS5's are huge investments and to get the most out of those platforms you'll need a monitor to go alongside them. Now, whilst you could use a 4K TV, which some of them do offer HDR support, what you'll often find is that the response time for televisions are considerably higher than that of gaming monitors. Naturally, a monitor like this is a huge investment too, but with that being said, you'll get maximum resolution with the best color density, offering full HDR 600 support, whilst delivering that with the incredibly low response time of one millisecond. Now, a rare but welcomed addition to the Mobius monitor is also the powerful 2.1 audio dual speakers alongside the robust 5 watt subwoofer that adds an extra layer of excitement to all your gaming and entertainment. Now to make sure you can get the most out of the built-in speakers and the subwoofer there's also additional one-click game modes that you can use and access via the remote that also comes with the monitor. There's specific audio settings for first-person shooters, racing games, any pop or live entertainment, cinema and also sports. Now these presets make the most of the Travolo True Sound Superior Sound settings, with the sound technology delivering incredible depth, clarity, bass definition, presence and enhanced stereo field imaging all out of the built-in speakers. Now as good as the speakers are, you don't have to use them, you can mute them, which is really beneficial if you're already using a studio pair of headphones or even a gaming headset. Now if you only use a gaming headset for its microphone, then the Mobius monitor also has a built-in microphone too. Now this mic is about as good as what you expect a built-in microphone to be, but it also has some cool AI noise cancelling technology. This will help the audio adapt to your scenario, so if you do engage the private mode, this will pick up any directional input and filter out any ambient sounds. To go alongside that, there's also an omnidirectional mode which will allow you to pick up any ambient sounds for that surround sound feel. Now this microphone is compatible on PC, Mac, PS5 and PS4, allowing you to sit down, enjoy your games and also chat with your friends without the need to have any headsets whatsoever. Now the Mobius EX3210 is probably the best monitor I didn't know I needed from a 
content creation perspective, having that extra real estate is an absolute joy when it comes to creating content. And then from a gaming perspective, games like Destiny 2 have never looked so good. Now, if you fancy checking out one of the Mobius monitors for yourself, BenQ have provided some links that you can find down in the video description. Not only is the 3210 there, which is the 32 inch version, they've also recently launched a 27 inch version. A very popular piece of feedback is that for gaming, 27 inches is probably the optimal size. And once again, BenQ have delivered by providing that alternative, whilst also providing two options depending on your budget. So that's a good look at the Mobius EX3210U gaming monitor, which when paired with something like a PS5 and also an Xbox Series X will allow you to get optimal performance straight out of the box. Now next up we're going to jump into a deep dive on gaming PC settings. When you combine this monitor with a high-end gaming PC there are some optimizations and changes that you can make to help improve your performance for your PC and also Destiny 2. Now I must state these are the changes that I make to my own system so please use this information at your own risk. Now any of the changes that we make can be reverted but it's also important to make a backup of all your data just in case anything reacts differently on your system. Now one of the first things we're going to take a look at is debloating windows even after a fresh windows install there's a lot of changes and optimizations we can do to make sure windows is running as smoothly as possible massive credit and shout out to chris titus tech for this utility tool now if we open up powershell as administrator and copy the link that you can find down in the video description below and paste it in and run it this will open up the utility tool now here there are many options that allow you to individually disable and enable different parts of windows but the part we're looking for here is the full optimization now whenever you click this button it will automatically make a restore point allowing you to revert back any changes it makes if they don't work out on your system and as well as a restore point if you want to disable any of the settings you simply click the button again and they will all automatically be re-enabled this optimization tool is essentially disabling a lot of the background processes that windows runs that you may not use and by disabling those it's freeing up plenty of ram for windows to continue to use as well as additional processes on your processor now using this tool should switch your power plan to maximum performance but we're going to check that anyway and if we need to make a custom change to make sure that maximum performance is selected ensuring all our components are getting the maximum power possible allowing them to perform at their optimal performance so now that windows is optimized and we have the right power plan selected we're going to look at updating the windows or graphics drivers and one of the best tools that i like to use is called the ddu and this tool alone will help you ensure a full clean graphics driver installation now before using this tool you'll want to make sure you've downloaded the latest graphics drivers directly from your graphics cards official website you'll be able to choose the manufacturer model and also the windows versions that you use to ensure you're downloading the latest version now before using the ddu you'll either want to disable your network adapters or simply unplug your ethernet cable now the reason for this is part of the process we're going to uninstall our graphics drivers and restart our system however what windows likes to do when you restart is automatically download the latest drivers we don't want the system to do that as we're going to be manually installing installing it to help ensure that we delete all the temporary files that are also being held on our system. Now once you reboot your system you'll notice your desktop is in a low resolution version which is based on your integrated graphics card. Now with the DDU process complete and having completely uninstalled the old graphics drivers we are now free to do a complete fresh install. This will create new folders and files for your graphics drivers allowing it to run at optimal performance. So if you ever find yourself playing Destiny and you see drop frames or even frames stuttering then try rerunning the DDU and doing a fresh GPU driver install and this should help solve all your issues. Now next we're going to take a look at the MSI mode utility tool and this tool helps us reprioritize any interruption settings for key components inside your PC. You'll need to rerun this after any major update to your video drivers as a lot of these interrupt priorities get reset. Now the link to this tool can be found down in the video description and you want to run this as administrator once again. Now some of the interrupt priorities will already be preset but the key ones that we're going to take a look at are things like your SATA AHCI controllers, your NVMe Express controller and also your graphics card itself. With these particular items you'll want to make sure that box is ticked and also the interrupt priority is set to high and with those changes being made you simply want to click apply and from here you can close that program Now these changes are quick and easy to make but they can make a substantial difference to your overall system performance now to help maintain our system performance we're going to use the intelligent standby list cleaner this is excellent for cleaning your ram 
ensuring that you have as much RAM possible for those key tasks, things like gaming and also content creation. And once again, the link to this can be found in the video description below. And by running it once again as administrator, we can see our total system memory and also any memory that's been held via the standby list or the system working sets. Now here we wanna click these two boxes to ensure this program can start each time you start Windows. And in this second box here, we're gonna put in half our total RAM amount. So for example, if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, then you wanna put 8,000 megabytes in this particular box. Now over on the right hand side, you'll have the ISLC polling rate, and this needs to match the polling rate of the mouse that you're using on your PC. For me, this is 1000 milliseconds. And with all these options entered and selected, we can minimize this and this will automatically go back to our taskbar. Now the job of this tool now is to continuously sweep our memory if our memory is ever lower than one gigabyte of RAM. This will help free up any non-essential tasks, ensuring optimal performance for any of the important programs that you're running, including gaming. Now, now with our system optimized, we're going to take a look at how you can optimize Destiny 2. Now first you need to make sure this is installed on your main C drive, ideally an NVMe drive, an SSD. This will ensure maximum read and write speeds, help lowering all your load times inside the game. Now if you're not sure where your Destiny 2 install is, if you open up Steam and go to properties on the Destiny 2 title, this will show you exactly where your Destiny 2 install is. If for any reason it's not on your main C drive, then you are able to change it here or you can do a complete fresh install on the C drive itself. Now with Destiny 2 installed in the right place, before we jump into the in-game settings, we're gonna take a look at the Nvidia control panel settings. If you right click on your desktop, and go to more options, you'll have the option of the Nvidia control panel. Now in the top section, you'll have 3D settings and you'll wanna make sure that you click on manage 3D settings. This will load up your global settings, which is applied to all applications on your PC. Now you can apply any changes to your global settings. However, I do recommend that you go to the program settings and select Destiny 2 from the program list and customize it individually. This is because each program and game reacts differently and are all optimized in different ways. Ways. The settings that I show here are optimized for Destiny 2, so to prevent them affecting other games, this is why I recommend making a program change specifically for Destiny 2. Now, as you can see here, there is quite a long list of various graphics features, but we're going to focus on the ones which have their setting statuses in bold, as this is where custom changes have been made. Any setting which is not bold has not been changed and is still the same as the default global setting. Now, the first feature we're going to take a look at is the anti aliasing. Now, we have this as application control controlled, allowing Destiny 2's internal settings to control our anti-aliasing. Now the next change in this list is for the low latency mode and we have ensured this is switched on. Now the low latency mode helps reduce latency by limiting the number of frames that the CPU can prepare before the frames are processed by your graphics card. So it's really important that you have this switched on to help reduce the latency that you see or experience in game. Next up we have a change for monitor technology. So if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor you can ensure this is switched on, otherwise you can use the global setting. Next, we have multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing. Here we've ensured this is switched off to further optimize our performance inside Destiny. Next, we have OpenGL rendering GPU. And here you wanna make sure you choose your graphics card that you currently have installed. Alongside that, we have the power management mode. And to go alongside your graphics card, you wanna ensure this is set to maximum performance. Moving down, we have texture filtering. And here you wanna make sure this is switched on with your negative bias set to allow and your quality set to high performance. Any further optimizations can also be switched on as these all help texture filtering making sure Destiny looks its best while also performing its best too. The final setting we're going to make a change to here is Vertical Sync, and we're going to ensure this is switched off. Now, Vertical Sync is a collection of settings that control the GPU render rate in relation to the refresh rate on your monitor. Now, when this setting is switched on, we have often seen tearing appear on screen, so you definitely want to make sure that is turned off. From here, we're going to move over to the display settings, and we're going to check the resolution and refresh rates for our monitor. Our main monitor is the BenQ... 3210U that we covered earlier in this video. As you can see, we have our native resolution set to 4K and our refresh rate is currently set to 144 Hertz. Alongside that, we're using the Nvidia color settings and we're making sure our color format is set to RGB with a full dynamic range of our color depth output being set to 10 bits per component. As this is a HDR monitor, this helps our color depth really pop 
whilst also ensuring incredible detail under varying lighting situations. Another setting I like to change, but this is personal preference, can be found in the desktop color settings. This is under the digital vibrant setting, and I just like to tick this up a notch to 55%. By default, this is set to 50, but it just helps those colors pop that little bit more, which is something really impressive in a very visually intensive game like Destiny. Now with all our system optimizations out the way and all our Nvidia settings all in order, we're gonna jump into Destiny 2 and further look at the in-game settings to ensure maximum frames at the highest possible resolution. So here we are inside Destiny 2 under the video graphics settings. Now I'm running windowed full screen. You will get better performance though if you run in regular full screen. I like to tab out quite a lot for Discord and OBS during streams. So this is a personal preference, but if you're looking for optimal performance, then full screen is where it's at. Now as for resolution, due to the Mobius monitor, we're gonna be running this in 4K Ultra HD. Now as for VSync, we're gonna ensure this is completely switched off. Now I do like to run a frame rate cap and set this to 144 Hertz, just to ensure that my graphics card is only creating enough frames, which is the absolute maximum that my monitor can display. Again, this is entirely personal preference. There's nothing wrong with having a 165 Hertz monitor that's producing over 300 frames, but I just like to limit the stress on my GPU generally. Next up, we have field of view. Now higher the field of view, the more GPU that Destiny 2 will use. As we have a 32 inch monitor here, I have reduced this to 100 FOV. If you're running on a 27 inch monitor, then 105 FOV is the absolute maximum. If you are struggling for system performance though, then you can reduce this down to the early to mid 90s, and this will help improve some of your performance whilst not completely changing what you see in game. Now, as for graphics quality, the easiest and quickest way to optimize your settings is to set these to low. With these all set to low, we can work our way through the list and set the ones that we need need to too high. Now naturally we're going to make sure the anti-aliasing is off. Screen space ambient occursion is also switched off. Texture anisotropy is also switched off. Texture quality, we're going to set this to high. Shadow quality, we're going to keep on low. Depth of field, we're going to completely turn off. Environmental detail distance, we're going to keep on low. Character detail distance, we're going to also remain low. Foliage detail distance is also low. As for foliage, shadows distance and also light shafts, we're going to keep these set to medium, which is their lowest settings motion blur is going to be completely switched off this alongside depth of field are two of the most graphically intensive options in this list just by switching them off you'll see a noticeable improvement in the frames that you have in game wind impulse we're going to set to off as well now down here we have some additional video options we have chromatic abrasion which is currently switched on however if you turn this off alongside film grain you can get around an extra 10 percent in your overall destiny 2 performance if you've got a hdr monitor then you can have this switched on as I have however this will use more VRAM so if you are really struggling for performance then once again you can turn that off now if you find even after making some of these changes you are still struggling for frames in Destiny 2 then you can tinker with the render resolution I would not drop below 90 on this particular setting as you'll start to notice a visual difference in the graphics in Destiny 2 and with all those settings being set we're going to hit return and to boot up these settings we're going to have to restart the game so here we are back in Destiny 2 and as you can see we are on Europa over at the beyond and I'm currently fully capped out at 144 frames in 4K. This is with one millisecond response time with HDNR enabled. So these settings are absolutely insane and as you can see Destiny 2 looks absolutely awesome too. Now depending on your hardware you will have varying results. A combination of some of the changes that we've made in this video should help improve your overall system performance as well as allowing for additional frames inside Destiny 2. So there we have it, how to get some of the best settings inside Destiny 2 in partnership with BenQ. Now if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.